have head coach Jonathan Geraldes. Jason, go ahead. Uh, Jonah, thanks for speaking with us. Uh, congratulations on, on the you. win. Um, it seemed in the first 20 minutes and maybe the first 20 minutes of the second half, you were maybe controlling the game with the ball. Um, Tara said defending with the ball. He was pretty happy about it. Um, how, did, how did that play out? How did you manage to control those stages of the game um, in possession pretty, pretty thoroughly, I would say? Yeah. Uh, for me, for today, the most important thing was uh, to create that confidence, adjust the height of the, hot, uh, the midfield advance with Courtney and Heather. Today, we put, uh, <coughs> we put Hal as a number six. So when we need... Uh, more players in build up is just drop a little bit the position of the of um, Courtney and Heather and I think they identify very well today uh, in terms of high when they have to be in pocket when they have to drop and be in base and for me the same thing for side back players for Paige and Gabby sorry <coughs> for Paige and, and Gabby today they did also a good job in terms of high when they had to be low to you know, create uh, an option to receive the ball when they have to be high to beat the opposing wing. It just, you know, adjust uh, type of high that the team needs. And today, I think we identify very well, especially inside, what we need to have the control of the game. And out of possession, uh, two goals in those phases, McKenna's goal and then Lena's at the end. Um, <coughs> how rewarding is that to see the team manufacturing goals when, you know, five seconds before that, you're not even on the ball? Yeah, I think we create a lot of chances. The first 30, 35 minutes uh, in the beginning of the game, we create a lot of chances. We were not clinical sometimes because the decision to shoot or put the ball into the box was not good enough. But then I think we, we keep uh, insisting. Um, we were creating a lot of chances, uh, playing in base and after that out, directly with the outside players to go forward. So it's very important. One of the keys in the beginning of the game is try to connect the environment supporters uh, in how they feel. For us, they are going to be very important for playoff and have a good starting. When you create chances, when, when you win, when you are winning tackles, uh, when you, you have to celebrate, when you create corners. So for me, it's a good point to start, um, to connect the people, because depends on us. Uh, if we create chances, they are going to be connected, more connected. So we are going to need them. They're going to be the player number 12. So I think we had a good starting, and the second half we start really good too. Uh, we have to keep going. Uh, okay, man, we'll, we'll finish in uh, Spanish. We're going to start with things. Oh. So I am sick. No worries. It's not what, uh, the solution for today. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I drink a lot today. so. <laughs> Uh, Jonah, with uh, Rosamond and uh, uh, McKenna just coming into the team and having such a big influence today, McKenna with uh, two goals, Rosamond with an assist and then winning the penalty, just how important is it for kind of them to find form with, with some attackers still out with injury, obviously Trinity returning from the bench today, but just at this stage of the season, seeing them start to <coughs> just contribute even more and get on the score sheet? Uh, they did a good job today. Usually we play with the... Uh, left winger coming inside to pocket, but today we thought that the best for the team was play with the wingers open. We had to modify the other day you were, uh, people was, uh, were asking to me about, you know, after and this injury, what do we have to do different now? And we are proving uh, having solutions in terms of build up especially. And when you can create chances in the way that you expect before the game, we roll with McKenna, getting the box and creating out of 1v1 situation in the side. We did a good job. Uh, when you score, you always say, OK, you did a good job because you scored. But for me, in possession, out of possession, they did a good, good job today. It was not easy, especially out of possession, because they were modifying all the time, uh, build up the stroke to the shape, sometimes holding midfielder, dropping wide, sometimes playing with three, other times with four. It was hard, but we were smart enough to play against them. So more, I need options. Uh, Maybe for starting, uh, the last game we were not playing with train, but the team is, is playing very well. So for me, when you have so many players available to compete as they did today, I'm happy for that.
and then just making those, the players kind of reacting to those adjustments. And I know you mentioned coming into the week, kind of viewing this as an opportunity, hoping the, the players kind of viewed it as, as the same way. Just how did you see this team kind of come together and, and put on a not just a result, but a kind of comprehensive pr performance today? Um, at, in a time where you know you're coming home um, after a three-game road stretch, and kind of important to generate that momentum entering the playoffs. Yeah, we we were playing the last three games in our away way, and today, after the the, the game against uh, Orlando, I was speaking about the game that we we did that for me we did a good job, and we had to keep believing in the way that we are practicing in training session, uh, in the way that we are competing as we did today, and having a good um, starting. For me, it's something it's about the mentality. How can you face that after bad news? In the beginning, um, August and September, I was remember, okay, too many good news, right? Now, when you have bad news, you have to face your best and give your best. Uh, it's just not about half intensity. The players have intensity. It's about the mental preparation. Keep respecting the game plan, giving your best in each 50-50. Uh, I keep insisting, uh, especially when we play at home, because the supporters, we know that they are very important. We did nothing so far. We need good to keep uh, building, and the next week we are going to have a tough game against uh, Chicago, so this is the way that we have to face again uh, Chicago. Okay. <coughs> um, Coach, this team started very well, has maintained um, consistency all through, are in the playoffs. You have experience of building championship teams. Does this look like a championship team to you? And um, what kind of levels do they have to hit to bring that championship back here? We need to improve. Uh, we are not going to win if we just play as we did today. We have to keep building. Um, I think in the first half we did that. It was not perfect because we, we had lack of uh, decision, especially in the last 30 meters. Sometimes we shot when we had to make more passes. Sometimes we put the ball into the box when we have other passes to be more compact and be aware for the for the second ball in case of that we, we lose the ball. And uh, the second half, they create chances. They create two, three clear chances. So we have to analyze after the game what we did in the right direction, what we have to improve and face the week as we always do. It's, this is a good job, but we have to keep improving on that. And now we have a clean week to, to keep practicing in, in trainings, everything in terms of soccer and game plan and prepare the team for the future. I never like to say when you win, OK, you did a good job. When you win, you have to analyze what you did bad and, and put a focus on that, especially in the week. For me, it's, I always did on my past. It's my methodology. I consider that that's the best for the, for the team. Just not pay too much attention to the result. For sure, we are here to win. But we have to improve the individual performance and the collective performance. So the next week is going to be the same week as we did after the Orlando's game. Mm -hmm. And how important is getting home field advantage for you and your team? It's very, very important. Uh, when you win, when you get three points, when you score four goals, when you create, I think, around 19 shoots uh, during the game, you have to celebrate uh, the victory. And we have to share in the end of the game with the supporters signing and taking pictures. That is very important uh, because when you are training so hard in the way that we are training and after losing the game and after Andy's injury, we need good news. So show a performance, show the performance that we showed today uh, is going to give us the confidence that we are going to need for the future. Thank you. Go back to Pete. <coughs> Hi, Coach. I was wondering if you could speak to Esme Morgan's performance and how she's been integrating into this team, as you Who? said. Uh, Esme Morgan Okay. Um, uh, has been in a few places across that back line. Um, today we saw her with Tara at center back, um, kind of how that and like moving along. Yeah. How the relationships along the back line have developed and like how you've seen her integrating yeah. with that group. For me, she can play in three positions. Um, against Orlando, she was playing in the beginning in the right back position but build up with three. So it's the role that she can she can do. And um, today she will play a center left back uh, with Tara. She, she's doing a good job. Uh, the adaptation from the beginning is being good. She's a good person. She's nice. Uh, the players had a good welcome with her. And when you are happy, when you are integrated, when you speak the same language, that is easier for her to, to adapt. And she's very smart, especially in possession. 
build up situations. She she commit mistakes, but she's not committing out of mistakes during build up. So that's very difficult, especially when you try to play inside. When you try to play inside and you are getting success every time that you play inside, it's because the level that she has is really, really high. Uh, we are putting the focus out of possession in the way that we have to defend. Because in the past, you know, playing for Man City, for the national team too, they like it to have a good build up uh, situation and, you know, with other players, they are ready to run behind. But here you need to be consistent, especially when you lose the ball in terms of aggressivity, in terms of when do when you have to jump, when you have to bump, when you have to run back. Um, I'm very happy so far with the performance that she's having, but as the same as uh, I was saying before about the team, we, we need to keep improving her for the most important games in the season. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And Andre? And Jonah, congrats on the win, and Thank thanks you. for speaking with us. Um, a lot of the players post-game said that they this was for Andy, that they were playing for Andy, and that's a you know obviously a good sentiment, and everybody's sad about what happened. But how do you, as a coach, make sure that they can continue to put on performances like this without that kind of, you know, uh, without that feeling that they had of, of having to play for Andy? Or is that something that can propel the team throughout the rest of the playoffs? Because we have players to compete. Uh, we have important players. For example, Heather and Courtney, they did a brilliant job playing in pocket and base. Uh, Hal had a different role today, playing as a six. And she did a perfect job for me in possession and out of possession. Uh, we have other players available to modify their role. What I like, usually when you are living in a complex system, as a human being, as an athlete, you need to occupy now different build that's, uh, that uh, we are not going to have with Andy. You know, we need that leadership with other players. We need to, ca to have a good communication because we don't have Fandy, so other players need to make a, a step forward. In terms of tactical planning, the same thing. We need other players now take the responsibility in possession and out of possession to make sure that we are feeling comfortable because we train for that. Uh, I never like to, you know, when you have your starting level and you are always using the same starting level, and when you are not giving too much confidence to other ones. But I think so far we, Personally, I was giving too many chances to other players to play because you never know if you are going to play. Uh, Lina, for example, only played 10 minutes, but she scored the last uh, goal. McKenna was not playing the start in the last game, but today she played and she scored two, uh, two goals. So we need the whole team to keep competing until the end because you are not going to win with just 11, 12 or 13 players. You are going to win with the whole team. And you mentioned it uh, in your response there about how playing in the in the sixth position. She played that a lot at Clemson. I watched a few of her games, and it looked very similar to what she did, kind of staying back and facilitating play. How would you assess her her game, both in possession and and out of possession? She has to be. She doesn't have to run so much. Uh, she has an amazing energy, uh, and sometimes she needs to to be just waiting for the ball. And today, especially, she needs that uh, be between the other strikers just behind them, uh, be ready to be an option to receive, a scan before receiving the ball, to play one, two touches, because it's a dangerous position if you lose the ball. And especially because we have Heather and Courtney close, just dropping. So for, for me today, uh, for Hal, before the game, we were discussing about it. She needs to be aware about who is around her to make sure that she's going to be in the place all the time that center back needs. And also in the last meters, because the last game we were asking to her, you have to get, you know, you have to ride to the box and try to create chances. But today, just making a good rest defense, be aware on that. Uh, how you are in a good position. If we lose the ball, how can we regain the ball possession? So it's be more static. I think we are going to help her a lot because we need that energy, but sometimes, not all the time. So playing as a six, you need to reduce the tempo and, and make sure that everything what you are doing in possession, especially, is being in the right direction. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we'll go over to Luis. 
Gracias. Muy buenas noches, felicidades por la victoria. Gracias. Quiero que me hables un poco, lo hablamos la otra vez en Zoom y me habías comentado que venían unos cambios, ¿no? que tenías que hacer un ajuste por la falta de jugadores. Quiero que me hables de esos ajustes que hiciste en la noche de hoy y con qué, con qué sensaciones ¿verdad? y con qué aspecto positivo te quedas del partido de esta noche. Bueno, hemos cambiado la estructura en ataque y también en defensa. En defensa más obligado porque, por cómo jugaban ellas, sobre todo en inicio. Pero a nivel, a nivel ofensivo, por la disponibilidad de las jugadoras que teníamos. Hoy hemos jugado con dos extremos abiertas, que eran McKenna y Rose. Hemos jugado con una jugadora en base, dos jugadoras en cuadrado. Y creo que hemos estado bastante bien en ese sentido. Esta adaptación para el día de hoy necesitábamos por el perfil de jugadoras, por el tipo de partido que teníamos delante, eh, jugar como hemos jugado hoy. Creo que la lectura es positiva. Hay cosas que podemos hacer mejor, por supuesto, pero mañana será día ya de analizar el qué para poder mostrar a las jugadoras y seguir creciendo, evolucionando como equipo. Háblame de rendimiento de Maquena. Esta noche ¿verdad? la pusiste de, de inicial y te respondió con dos goles. Y lo mismo que has dicho siempre, ¿no? Las jugadoras tienen que estar claras que con la falta de jugadoras todas tienen que estar disponibles para competir porque algún momento tienen que salir a la cancha. Sí, ha hecho buen partido, no solo por los goles. Eh, creo que el gol, primer gol que marca es de una buena fase defensiva. Le pedíamos que saltase a la central externa y ha identificado muy bien y ha podido interceptar ese balón. Eh, por tanto, no solo quiero destacar o premiar, sé que el MVP normalmente se le da por ¿no? quien marca más goles, quien es la más determinante, pero yo quiero destacar la fase defensiva. Ha hecho un muy buen trabajo, lo que necesitábamos para, para el día de hoy. Eh, y todas las jugadoras que vienen del banco son, son importantes, eh, no es un tópico, es una realidad. Necesitamos todas las jugadoras porque nunca sabes cuándo vas a jugar y todas tienen que sentirse importantes. Hoy otras jugadoras han tenido la oportunidad y bueno, eh, satisfactoriamente hemos conseguido la victoria. Eh, coach, eh, pues es realmente admirable el día de hoy. Sabemos que no te sientes bien, pero te llevaste <coughs> este 4 a 1. ¿Cuál es la mentalidad que tú tienes al entrar a, a enfrentarte en un partido que ya están ustedes llegando aquí a los playoffs? ¿Cómo es que tú te preparas mentalmente para estar preparado para, para esta batalla? Pues siempre con optimismo, con motivación, e intentando anticipar todos los escenarios que puedan suceder durante el partido, intentando acertar con el mensaje que le doy a las jugadoras. Intentando acertar en la alineación, en los cambios, en la lectura de lo que está pasando en el partido. Creo que es importante estar concentrado eh, antes del partido, durante el partido y también te diría después del partido. Eh, hay que celebrar, pero no tanto. Hay que celebrar porque conseguimos una victoria, pero mañana tenemos, eh, siempre digo, 24 horas ¿no? de celebración o de tristeza en función del resultado, pero ya remontar y volver para, para seguir entrenando y seguir compitiendo. Hasta ahora. Estamos bien porque estamos en esa segunda posición que nos da ventaja. El primer partido de los playoffs lo jugaremos en casa, pero queremos más. Es un equipo ambicioso y creo que es lo que tenemos que transmitir. Eh, hiciste el cambio y entró Silano. ¿Qué opinas de ese, ese último gol que ella hizo? Bueno, siempre nos da mucha intensidad, mucha energía. Notaba el equipo que ya no estaba recuperando tantos balones en campo contrario y creía que nos podía dar un poquito más, McKenna ya estaba cansada, Hachi estaba bien de piernas, la notaba, algo, la notaba fresca para seguir defendiendo y para seguir corriendo, y Lina nos da eso, nos da mucha intensidad, mucha energía, sabes que en situaciones de espaldas puede recibir, ha estado lista, identificando ese balón que ha recuperado, estoy muy contento por ella, porque, porque no es una temporada sencilla por los minutos que, que está teniendo, pero siempre está con buena cara, con buena actitud, siempre ayudando al equipo, buena compañera, tiene un comportamiento ejemplar y estoy muy contento por el gol que ha marcado hoy. Ese segundo gol de McKenna Morris, ¿fue algo que ustedes habían pre preparado en los entrenamientos? Bueno, todo lo que pasa en el uh -huh. juego depende exclusivamente del talento de las jugadoras. Uh -huh. Yo como entrenador intento ayudarlas para que de alguna manera estén en el lugar que tienen que estar y que después puedan resolver las situaciones que se plantean. No hay que confundirse, nosotros las ayudamos entrenando, las ayudamos con vídeo, las ayudamos en el mensaje que le damos antes del partido. Hoy por el perfil de partido necesitábamos que las extremos tuviesen llegada a segundo palo y tuviesen situaciones de uno contra uno, lo hicieron, pero al final las jugadoras son las que resuelven y hoy creo que lo han hecho muy bien. ¿Qué opinas del gol que metió Sears en el minuto 72 por parte de Racing Dow? Bueno, no me ha gustado, obviamente, porque teníamos el partido controlado, eh, pero me ha gustado la reacción del equipo. Eso sí, eh, después de ese gol encajado, en lugar de venirnos abajo, hemos tenido personalidad otra vez para seguir jugando. Creo que ha sido el rato del partido que más posesión hemos tenido. Entonces creo que eso es muy buena señal, de no esconderse, de seguir asumiendo riesgos controlados en salida para, para tener esa confianza con balón que creo que hoy hemos tenido. Chicago... Reds es el, pro, eh, es el próximo partido. 
¿Cómo te sientes en enfrentarlas aquí en casa? Eh, tenemos ganas de que llegue ese partido, pero primero es disfrutar de la victoria de hoy y ya durante la semana tendremos tiempo para preparar ese partido. Hola, Jura. Uh, felicitaciones de la victoria. Solo quería preguntar, después de tres partidos en, fuera de casa, ¿cómo te sientes de, de, tener, de tener dos partidos aquí en casa ya para terminar la temporada? ¿Y cómo está la confianza del equipo ya con esta victoria esta noche, ya pensando en los playoffs? Eh, tenía muchas ganas, teníamos muchas ganas de jugar en el Audi Field, porque bueno, yo creo mucho, mucho, mucho en la conexión entre las jugadoras, el staff, la afición. Eh, generar una buena atmósfera en casa creo que es clave. Eh, por mi experiencia, creo que es una de las cosas más importantes, porque creo que está relacionado. Si tú creas ocasiones, si tú marcas goles, si tú ganas partidos, la gente está contenta, la gente te anima. Entonces, cuando tienes una situación de adversidad, la gente va a estar ahí. Y creo que hemos tenido muy buena entrada hoy. Hemos entrado muy bien al partido, hemos creado muchas ocasiones, hemos marcado goles, la gente creo que ha, se ha divertido. Por tanto, bueno, el hecho de jugar en casa nos da eso, que podamos seguir conectando a la gente. Para mí es fundamental. Creo que se están consiguiendo cosas importantes. También desde marketing se está consiguiendo que la gente venga eh, al estadio. Se está haciendo un buen trabajo en todas las áreas. Y las protagonistas tienen que darles motivos, ¿no? como digo yo, cada semana para que la gente siga viniendo al estadio, siga disfrutando, siga apoyando el equipo, para que juntos podamos conseguir cosas importantes. Hablando de la conexión con la, con la afición, ¿qué es la importancia de tener partidos de playoffs aquí en casa, a, a, ya jugando enfrente de tu afición en, esos, de, en esa etapa de, de jue, en este tipo de juegos? <coughs> bueno, considero que siempre tienes algo de ventaja, por eso al final clasificar lo más arriba posible nos va a permitir eso. Eh, y ahora mismo dependemos de nosotras, en función de cuántos partidos queremos jugar los playoffs eh, en casa. Creo que es un punto muy importante a tener en cuenta. Pero a mí nunca me gusta poner la mirada más allá de un día vista. Ahora mismo es disfrutar de este partido y mañana prepararnos para el siguiente partido. Creo que sería un gran error por mi parte pensar en los playoffs. Ahora lo que hay que pensar es seguir mejorando como equipo. Cada jugador a nivel individual. ¿Qué nos puede dar? ¿En qué podemos mejorar? ¿Con balón? ¿Sin balón? Creo que esto es fundamental. La... Creo que pensar eh, en los playoffs te distrae. Entonces, ahora mismo es tiempo de disfrutar, pensar en el siguiente partido, que es el futuro cercano ahora mismo para mí es lo más importante. Gracias. Nada. Luis, Coach, eh, me había comentado ¿verdad? sobre la mentalidad de que el equipo tiene que estar preparado para el momento en que se ha llamado. O sea, Hemos hablado muchas veces de la mentalidad que le ha, que le ha implementado este equipo, ¿no? desde el área del juego en la cancha, desde el área mental, ahora en esta área también. O sea, qué tan importante es dejarle saber al equipo, a todas, que todas son importantes y que cada cual va a tener una noche especial. Entrenando. Eh, de la manera que tú entrenas, pues luego vas a tener más opciones que el partido, la frontes de la manera que toca. Me gusta mucho que la atención el día a día esté en el entrenamiento, en qué quieres trabajar ese día, cómo puedes mejorar, competir. Y después, pues competir también en otras cosas. Eh, ya no es solo jugar bien, es ser inteligente. ¿no? Cuando hay un saque de banda, un balón dividido, cómo provocar una falta. Bueno, hay cosas ¿no? que entre líneas pues también podemos mejorar en temas de ser competitivas y que estamos trabajando también. Eh, al final, cuando analizas el juego, lo tienes que analizar en todas sus vertientes. Eh, la jugadora depende no solo de cómo esté físicamente, depende de la posición en el campo, depende de a nivel emocional como usted, de cómo gestione sus emociones, eh, depende de muchísimas cosas. Intentamos, pues con toda la gente que estamos trabajando alrededor, pues que las podamos ayudar. Ayudar para que pueda rendir después en el partido y que podamos disfrutar como, como hemos disfrutado hoy. Buenas noches y que mejore pronto. Gracias, eso espero. Llevo tres días así ya. Gracias, Jose. Gracias, everyone. We'll Thank be right you. back with Hal Hirschfeld, Morris, and Ash Cash.